हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू जैकलेट एजुकेशनल चैनल सो दिस इज द टाइम टू रिवील आवर मंथली टॉप परफॉर्मर फॉर दिस वीकली क्विज कॉन्टेस्ट एंड वी विल ऑल्सो नो मेनी इंटरेस्टिंग फैक्ट्स रिलेटेड टू एनवायरमेंटल साइंस सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग मच टाइम लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो दीज आर द रूल्स फॉर द पार्टिसिपेशन यू कैन पॉज द वीडियो एंड गो थ्रू ऑल दिस रूल्स बिकॉज यू कैन बी द टॉप परफॉर्मर फॉर द नेक्स्ट मंथ इफ यू परफॉर्म कंसिस्टेंटली वेल So let's discuss the questions first which came on 26th of July 2021. So the first question was in situ and ex situ conservation method includes which of the following? And here many of you were confused and given the wrong option. So here the correct option will be option number B. Yes, sacred groups and botanical gardens respectively. That means sacred groups is an example of in situ conservation, and botanical garden is an example of ex situ conservation. And you all must be knowing in situ and ex situ conservation. But for your convenience, I will again repeat that that the in situ conservation means on the site conservation. So to protect any plant or animal species. in its natural habitat it is known as in situ conservation so it can be sacred groups it can be forest and ex situ conservation means the conservation or protecting the endangered species mostly or rare species that can be both plants and animals from their natural habitats to the protected area so this is not conserving in their own habitat it is relocating them to the other habitats or other techniques for example the techniques can be cryopreservation zoos or botanical gardens so i think you are clear with this let's move to the next question so the second question was identify the wrongly matched pair so these pairs were the disease name along with the causal organism and here the wrongly matched pair will be option number a yes because the tuberculosis is caused by the mycobacterium tuberculosis not mycobacterium tumefaciens so it will be wrong and similarly you should also know pneumonia is caused by that is the mycoplasma pneumonia and whooping cough is caused by bordetella pertussis and chicken pox is caused by the varicella so these are important kindly note down time for the third question the third question was very interesting and very very complicated also many of you have done wrong the question was beside richter scale earthquake intensity cannot be measured through which of the following scale so here it was mentioned cannot so cannot it will be option number b through newton scale we cannot measure earthquake intensity or earthquake variation but with the help of the mercalli scale or modified mercalli scale which is called nowadays and richter scale we can measure the earthquake intensity so we'll know the difference between the mercalli scale and richter scale so it is also important kindly make this table i am reading out each and every one very very easily so that you can understand first is measures so mercalli scale measures the effects caused by the earthquake whereas the richter scale measures the energy released by the earthquake the measuring tool in mercalli scale is through the observation of the earthquake and the measuring tool in the richter scale is seismograph so you should be knowing seismograph used to measure the earthquake intensity in richter scale next is calculation so the calculation based on the observation of the effect on earth surface on humans on objects and man made structure which is used in the quantification in the mercalli scale but in case of richter scale it is based on the 10 logarithmic scale so what is this 10 logarithmic scale we'll know in the next point it is also very important which is obtained by calculating the logarithm of the amplitude of waves so waves are generated when the earthquake takes place so from their logarithmic scale it is calculated now coming to the scale so this is the scale of mercalli scale is from 1 to 12 this is also important it has been asked in the environmental science entrances where the one denotes the not felt so when the earthquake is not felt very very less it is denoted as 1 and 12 is the scale where total destruction complete destruction is seen similarly in the richter scale the scale is from 2 to 10 plus so 10 plus till now never recorded anywhere on earth but three earthquake when there is the measurement in the scale of richter scale it is 10 times stronger than two earthquake so it is given an example that why it is called as base 10 logarithmic scale because when the in richter scale it is mentioned that it is three that means it is 10 times stronger than the richter scale which will be showing two so for every point it is 10 times more destructive 
Coming to the last point, the last point is consistency. So the Merkel scale consistency depends, it varies. So the Merkel scale consistency varies depending on the distance from the epicenter. And this also varies, this Richter scale consistency varies at different distance from the epicenter. But one thing you should note that one single value is given for the earthquake as a whole which is not seen in case of Merkel scale. So let's move to the next question. I hope you have learned something new. The next question is from the noise pollution and control rule of 2000. The question was as per noise pollution rule, the permissible nighttime noise level limit for the commercial area is how much? So table is on your screen. You can easily answer. So I will tell you the answer. The answer will be option number B, 55 decibel. So this table is also very, very important as per the examination purpose. So the four areas are categorized into A, B, C, D that are industrial area, commercial area, residential area and silence zone. So in silence zone, industrial area, all these are limit set that this much should be the noise level. This should not exceed this noise level. So what are the level we'll know? During the daytime, industrial area should be having maximum of 75 decibel, the noise level. And during night time, the industrial level will be having 70 decibel of sound pollution. Next, coming to the commercial area, daytime it is the limit is 65 decibel night time is 55 residential area daytime limit for the noise is 55 decibel night time is 45 decibel and similarly for a silence zone which is the having the area code of d it should be having daytime limit of 50 decibel and night time of 40 decibel so let's move to the next question these are important kindly note down the fifth question was from the forest produce type so the forest produce are divided into two categories the products they are minor forest produce and major forest produce you should know all these things and here the question was asking which among the following are included into the category of minor forest produce and the options were tendupatta bamboo sandalwood and tamarind so here the correct option will be option number c yes one two and four that means tendupatta from which the bd is prepared the bamboo and the tamarind these three are the minor forest produce example but sandalwood is not the minor forest produce it is coming under the major forest produce so it is important let's move to the sixth question the sixth question was from statistics basics question the question was pearson correlation coefficient that r value lies in between which and which number which and which value and here Many of you have given the correct option. The option will be option number C. The coefficient of Pearson correlation that is R lies between minus 1 and 1. Time for the seventh question. The seventh question was which toxic metal is present in the color printing inks of magazine pages? And here the correct option will be option number D. Both A and B that means both lead and cadmium are present in the color printing inks of magazine pages which are toxic metals. Time for the eighth question. So the eighth question was the most appropriate method for separating the tin cans from the aluminum cans in the municipal waste is which of the following process. And here the correct option will be the most appropriate method will be the magnetic field separation technique in which the tin will be having more interaction towards the magnetic field as compared to the aluminum cans and they will be easily separated. Let's move to the ninth question. The ninth question was the retardation factor is related to which of the following? And here the correct option will be option number A. Yes, the retardation factor is related to the thin layer chromatography which is also known as the TLC for separating different kinds of substances present in a single substance. So let's move to the final question. The 10th question was an object used in measuring the heat of combustion of a particular reaction is what? And here the correct option will be option number C. Bomb calorimeter is the object which is used to measure the heat content of a particular reaction. So let's see more about the bomb calorimeter and why it is called as bomb. So first of all, you should know what is a calorie meter. So this calorie meter are the object which are used for measuring the heat of any chemical reaction. So they are 
heat measuring objects and bomb calorimeter is a specific kind of calorimeter which is a type of constant volume calorimeter so this you should note down that it is a constant value volume calorimeter and which is used in measuring the heat of combustion as the property of any calorimeter and the main thing is how it calculates the energy so the heat which is escaping throughout this bomb so bomb is actually this shape you can see this is the whole setup for a bomb calorimeter and this strong steel vessel which is of this shape is known as the bomb cell or it is called as bomb so inside this what we have to do we have to place the sample so the sample can be in powder form or in gas form so if it is in gas form then it will be inserted with the help of this valve so this valve is used to insert the gaseous compound the sample if it is any solid then it will be going through this chamber so it is very easy to understand i'll let you know first of all this sample is kept over here inside the bomb this shell and what happens is all these things are surrounded with water so normal water is placed and this stirrer ensures that the water is at uniform temperature so it stirs the water and the water is having the uniform temperature and then what happens is the electrical heating device so it is the electrical heating device on which the sample is placed which heats the sample so after heating the sample releases the heat and this heat is escaping out from this bomb and it is distributed throughout the water so the water temperature also rises and we have to measure the temperature of water and which will give the idea that how much of temperature is released from that sample and as a result we can get the calorie content of any fuel so in this way the bomb calorie meter works so i hope it is easily understandable now it's time to reveal the results for this quiz contest so two of the performers have secured 10 out of 10 marks they are Akshay Bharadwaj and Alka Jain congratulations to both of you and other participants who have also done well are Khadija Samrin, Jia Chanchal, Diksha Kumari, Akanksha, Geeta Sharma, Nishar Gowda, Diksha Pandey, Rakhi Tyagi, Sohawani, Viswas, Tashkin Khan and Vramari. So congratulations to all of you keep up the good work. And the top performer for this month is Khadija Samrin. So congratulations to Khadija Samrin for securing 37 out of 40 marks throughout this month and you are the top performer for this month. So keep it up and believe in yourself. So guys if you also want to be the top performer and win the e-certificate and cash prize don't forget to attend this quiz every week on Monday. So see you all in our next video.